right, before we talk about the yeah. old games, this game. Yeah. You have completed it. I have, yeah. You didn't write a review. No, I didn't. That would, that would be up to Mark. You played it for the fun times. <laughs> yes, I played it because I I wanted to. The old school way. <laughs> <laughs> I forget about yeah, that. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. happen very often for game reviews. <laughs> Uh, what is your honest opinion of, uh, of, of DMC, of Devil May Cry, call on Devil May Cry? I like it. I do like it. My, the biggest thing for me is that I don't think it's the same as the old ones. Which is a criticism like, that has been bouncing around yeah. chat and forums ever since Ninja Theory yeah. were even penned on the project. I mean, I've read a few reviews this morning that say it's... it's you know, it, it sort of fits in with the series. Mm -hmm. I don't think it does. Like, when they say reboot, it really is a new, a new game. This basically. is the completely separate canon universe. Yeah. Everything from the originals, anyway, right? Uh, there's lots of recurring themes. Like Mundus is still the bad guy in this, mm -hmm. as he was in in the first game. Uh, and a lot of you know a lot of the plot stuff, a lot of the backstory is the same. But they've basically taken a new a new spin on it. Yeah. I'm trying to think of other things that have been rebooted. Like I, I guess like Battlestar Galactica or something. Mm. Like there's a lot of similar elements, but they they've taken it in a, in a new a new way of telling the story from the beginning. Um, I do think it's a, a really different game. Like, it doesn't feel like the old Devil May Cry games yeah. to me. Does it play like them? Uh, I mean, in, in the sense, in the sort of the top level sense that it's a third person hack yeah. and slash game, then yes, it does. But, uh, but once you get down to the nitty gritty of the combat and stuff, like, no, I don't think it does. It feels like a different game to me. In what ways? From looking at the stream and yeah. uh, listening to what yeah. people have been saying in the chat, it looks like the speed mm -hmm. of the combat is a, is, a, is a difference. It looks like it's possibly a bit more lethargic. Yeah, it's a lot slower. I mean, one of the big things that people have been picking up on is that this is running at 30 frames a second mm. on console, and the old games were a very strict 60 frames a second, so the, the combat does feel a little bit slower. Uh, the, it's you think it's just an aesthetic thing mostly, or? Um, I think it affects the actual gameplay, but I think the weapons made have been the weapons that they've put in this game have been done to work with with what they've got here. Are the basically. guns still called ebony and ivory? They are, and the main sword is still called rebellion. Yeah. Uh, but the, the the second weapons, as you can see, Cam using the um, the axe, the fiery axe thing. Arbiter. I, is it? Arbiter. Yeah, yeah. Arbiter yeah. <laughs> I do forget. What's it the called? Names. The Arbiter. Yeah. Arbiter. Yeah, which I, makes me the Halo, right? Arb yeah. <laughs> yeah very, I, 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 very confused. I'm not. Uh, fiery Axe is okay as well. Yeah, Fiery Axe, day, you know. <laughs> it sells it in a more direct way than Arbiter. Yes, I'm, I'm a bit hazy on the actual names of the weapons. but um, Was the shielded Bathos in the, in the, <laughs> in, in the previous game? Uh, no. No. But. Um, you know, it, it does it does feel different. Like that kind of pull stuff mm. was in Devil May Cry 4. Yes. You could do that. But the implementation, like it's, the, it, it sort of yanks them a bit. It does feel just a little bit slower. But when I say all this stuff, I don't want you to think that I'm being negative on the game. Yeah. I do think it's a different game. Like if you wanted a game to be a sequel to the four that you've already played, yeah. then I think you might be a little bit, oh, this one's, this one's different. But I think if you... Are happy for them to reboot the series, then this is a good game. I think that's going to be the central issue that runs through this game after it comes out. Mm. I think some people will do not want a reboot and it's, will it's, never be happy with what they've done, whereas I think Ninja Theory have done a great job with this reboot. Yeah. But it is a different game. So, right. so before we get into the nitty gritty of the older mm. games, you as a fan of the series, were yeah. you satisfied with the direction they took? Yes, because I thought 4 was a bit rubbish. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I think they... they more they, rubbish than two? Um, it's debatable. No, no, it wasn't more <laughs> rubbish than two. It wasn't more <laughs> rubbish than two. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step in and say it wasn't more rubbish than two, but it was... You did see that they kind of... That series had kind of run its course, I guess. The way mm. they were doing it, it felt to me like it had, it had run its course. Three is my personal favourite. Okay. Um, three, I bought a PlayStation 2 just to play Devil May Cry 3, and it was great. Like... Three will always be the highlight of the series for me, and that's because three, you know, meant something to me personally. And was I was that the first one you played? Yeah, and then and then it's also the first one in the story as well, it isn't is. it? Yeah, it yeah. is. In terms of continuity, this is most similar to three. I okay. guess if you want to pair them up, like he's, you know, Dante in Devil May Cry Three is young, he's cocky, he's a bit brash. Hmm. Um, there's there's a sort of flamboyance to him in three that he doesn't have so much in the later games, especially the older he gets in the series. The, well, the order he gets as a person. He's not having as so much fun anymore. That's deep, I man. Think. Yeah. And, but I think, I think so... Three and this one are kind of... 
in the same sort of place, like he's still sort yeah. of discovering himself. Like that's a big thing about this game is that this new Dante is doing that voyage of self-discovery. So that what you're saying is this is a coming of age game? A bit, yeah. All right. Yeah, he learns to be a grown up at the end. He's sort of grown and grown up a little bit. I'm kind of giving away some of the developments oh, of the character, but um, does he, he ever wash the bit. squirrel semen off his hand? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> At least before shaking anyone else's hand, I could guess. You, could you explain the, uh, the the video project that you pitched to Guy just a few minutes ago? <laughs> sure. So, as you will have seen in a cutscene about ten minutes ago, uh, the sort of psychic character, Cat, mm. can Who make... kind of looks like the girl from uh, Heavenly Sword. A bit. Ninja Theory's previous... You know that little... Yeah. yeah. I see it. Well, she makes portals to Limbo using a spray a spray can sort of cocktail one of the ingredients is squirrel semen. Yes. And I was suggesting that maybe we could get Mark, who reviewed the game, to make one of these cocktails <laughs> and drink it, and drink it. Game. Drink it. No, not drink it. <laughs> drink it, Cam. Oh. But just to see what happens if we were to spray that possibly on a wall or the ground in these offices. Yeah, or the public. Get... Yeah, or on the public. <laughs> <laughs> or on what the would happen? The public. I think <laughs> I know what would happen. <laughs> Can we make Mark harvest uh, said yeah. items? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's going to be the hardest part. Yeah. Is trying to get a, a squirrel yeah. horny to the point of release. Sadly, <laughs> you never get to see how it's made in the game. But no. I'm, I'm guessing it's I hear dark. that's DLC. <laughs> <laughs> DM DMC yeah. DLC. Well, as long as it's not on the disc, I'm I sure. Think it's that <laughs> Danny, it's DMC colon DMC DLC. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry, of course. DMC uh, colon <laughs> Devil May Cry semi colon Squirrel Semen DLC. Hashtag. There you as, go. as played by Mark Walker. I know, yeah. Breaking news. <laughs> There you go. Confirmed. Take that Can one. Can we get a confirmed off? Yeah, okay. <laughs> someone, someone emailed Kotaku. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's dive into Devil May Cry of Devil May Cry's past. Right, so we're going to... I guess as Cam plays, we're just going to run over some of the stuff. I'm yeah. going to try, try and link it into what's going on here. Good luck. Uh, <laughs> Feel free to let me know how I'm doing as well, and tell me yeah. the what yeah. the chat was saying, because I haven't, I haven't seen the chat, so I don't oh, know if I'm Oh, you being... don't want to know what the <laughs> chat is <laughs> saying. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. So, 2001. Yep. Uh, Resident Evil 4 is being uh, conceived of. How mm -hmm. does that tie into the first game? So, when... So obviously, at the start of the PlayStation 2, Capcom knew they had to make a new Resident Evil game. Yeah. Because, you know, this is the games industry. <laughs> and they, one of the prototypes they were making ended up becoming the first Devil May Cry, mm. basically. So, so it, never, it was Resident Evil as a, as a, in a conceptual way, mm. but they realized the game was too different. And so they, they, they sort of made a spin-off into Devil May Cry. And I think... I mean, we were playing it the other day. Yeah, we played Raven it on encounter. Friday. So if you're watching this stream an hour ago and you're wondering why we're wearing different clothes, uh, that was on Friday. And we'll have a highlights version of that show up later on today. I was really worried for a bit that we'd actually be wearing the same clothes. I, I, <laughs> and we'd look really bad. I'm not saying I made a, con I made a conscious effort this morning. <laughs> for but I made an effort for once to put on different clothes. Uh, um, you have like ten of that shirt anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I see you're drawing. It's true. It's true. Um, where were we? Okay, so they got the prototype. They've got the prototype game. Yeah. Uh, it becomes the first Devil May Cry, and as I felt we could see when we were playing it the other day, mm. I'll, you can see Resident Evil in yeah. it. You can see the fingerprints of Resident Evil in the first game. Like there's a big spooky castle. Castle. It's, it's, it feels very gothic. The, in first, the, the first room you walk into is a massive yeah. staircase with doors off of it, you know. It's, yeah. So you can kind of, I can certainly feel Resident Evil in the first Devil May Cry game mm. in a way that I don't get as much of as From the previous series progresses. Ones. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like so, this one, for instance, if you look at what's happening now, this doesn't look very Resident Evil to me. No, right? That influence is gone. But back in the day, back back what, 11, 12 years, 12 ago, years ago, when yeah. they first made it, like I can I can feel it, and I think it runs throughout the whole of the first Devil May Cry. Mm. Um, I guess that game is now so old that a lot of people. Will have just missed it. Yeah, you know, like very possible. The, there's, there's it's kind of early in the PlayStation Two life cycle as well. Yeah, you know, that console sold a lot over its entire lifespan. But I'm sure if, you, if <laughs> DMC Three was the first yeah. one you played, I'm sure there's lots of people yeah. that, that missed out. On I mean, it. I was young when Devil May Cry One yeah. came out. So if you're young now, you weren't born. Yeah, one, you're super lucky. Oh, whoops. So. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it's difficult. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. Uh, and so, yeah, you see, so a lot of people, I think, won't have played the first game. That's basically yeah. what I'm getting at. Um, but it's good. It's a good game. But it does feel a little bit rough around the edges now, I think, as, as I think when we were playing it the other day. It's still yeah. pretty good. But Well, it's just like <coughs> we were trying to think of a game that was a hack and slash of that yeah. ilk. Uh, before that came out. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. now we've got you know Ninja Gaiden and, and another such good God of War mm -hmm. games like that. But I'm sure, th for some reason, I'm sure there must have been because you never. I don't think yeah. it said that Devil May Cry was the first one, but it certainly has. When you're playing it, you notice things about mm -hmm. it that have been rectified in yeah. more recent uh, the games of that genre. There's a certain, there's a speed and elegance to the combat mm -hmm. that that game doesn't have yeah. that later games yeah. in the series would get it's a very yeah. slow if it does a yeah. waste to him that they don't because yeah. even the environment's quite yeah. slow, uh, quite small yeah and it just one. it felt kind of lumpy to me like i mean it was still quite cool looking but mm. they're just that the reaction time to the controls that you can see that sort of the new dante has now and mm. i think he really i think the series really found in devil may cry 3 that's just not there so i found it a little bit difficult to go back and play which i do think is a running theme of the random encounter yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we find the games we loved a decade ago <laughs> are actually hard to play now um yes hopefully we'll rectify that <laughs> over the next couple of weeks <laughs> we uh, before we go on to devil may cry 2 a yeah. uh, quick note about the story how much of the story do yeah. you do you remember even um so you what was the setup for the first dmc devil may cry Kind of similar, like Mundus, who is the villain in this, mm. was the villain in the first game. You, in the first game, Dante, well, not just in the first game, in, in the old sort of quartet, mm. Dante has a, a sort of detective agency shop called Devil May Cry. Oh, yes, yeah, so, yeah. Um, actually, was it Devil? Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah we yeah, saw yeah. it on the front. Of, I thought it was a bar for ages. And um, he goes on missions to fight demons, who he really hates because demons were involved in... Well, his dad was a demon, and demons caused the death of his mum. Slack. Right? Yeah. Which, that's basically the part of the new game that we're at now. That's what's going on. Like, if we turn down our annoying English, English voices, <laughs> like, hey, that, that would be... I've read the annoyed. comments. I've read the YouTube comments. Those guys have annoying English voices. Uh, if you turn that down and put the game audio up, that's what's being discussed. He's okay. upset because his parents were killed. He's going through their old house now. And yeah. he's having a sort of memory thing. Because you haven't had a sob, is he listening to Linkin Park a bit? And I think a little bit. A little bit in his mind, and yeah. if he had an iPod in, I imagine that's what would be on. But so that this is the part of the game he's going through. So those that stuff sort of set up in the first game yeah. as well. So second one, Devil May Cry 2. Devil May Cry 2 is awful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 2003, a uh, very hotly anticipated sequel yeah. comes out two years afterwards. Less than two years actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, ma massive, massive negative reception, both critically and and yeah. commercially. Or and I'll tell with you why. People. Why? Tell me why okay. Devil May, the Devil May Cry 2 sucks. So Devil May Cry 1 was really popular. Yes. And Capcom thought, we're onto something here. But what we need to do, as is always the way with capitalism, is wow. expand it. You know, we need to get more people playing. Like, there's not enough that we've got the people we are playing. We want everyone to play. Mm. So one of the, 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 uh, one of the design decisions was to make it a lot easier. And that takes quite a lot of the fun out. Yeah. Like, this is a game that is so easy, you can defeat most of the major bosses in the game, which up until then were like one of the biggest parts. Like, oh yeah. man, the bosses. Like, I, I remember yeah. Yeah. with that friggin' spider on Friday. It was tough. Yeah. Like, these were tough bosses. And in Devil May Cry 2, the bosses are so simple, you can just stand in the corner of a room and just shoot at them. And then the game, like so one of the things we, we've, not really spoken about is one of the big things about the first game is there's a style meter in the top yeah. right of the screen and that tells you like if you use lots of different attacks and you don't get hit if you mix it up that meter goes up and you get more points so kind of like in this one yeah the, i think that's a very iconic part of the series like it's the classic do good things in game get loads of points yeah and that was really cool and then so in the second game when they made it super easy and then the game was like oh this is cool you know, you were doing things that didn't feel like they were accomplishments, and yeah. the game was going, ah, you're super cool. <laughs> and you were like, I don't know, I don't feel very cool right yeah. now. And, and that was a big problem. One of the things it did do, though, is Devil May Cry 2 had a second protagonist. It was very similar to Resident Evil 2. Yeah, didn't you start off with somebody yeah. different? Well, there, there was two discs. So there was, ah, like, okay. the kind of multiple campaign thing. And Could you then swap over? It didn't quite. I like Resi 2, no. No. Right. And, um... 
there, there, there were two campaigns. So it was, it was a big game. I also heard in the chat that there was more boobies in Devil May Cry 2. There are quite a few more boobies. Yeah. I was trying to avoid that part of it. 13. <laughs> there, are, there are quite a few more. And it just, you feel like maybe the people making it didn't quite have the sense of style anymore. Like it kind mm. of lost some of its spark. And it just, so it wasn't really fun to play and it wasn't really fun to watch. And the world was really big. Like the trend in game design at this point was yeah. to, to make games really Large. Yeah. big. It was the start of that open yeah. world, you know, everything becoming yeah. open world. And if you look at the first game, the corridors and stuff, they're super tight and yeah. constrained. And then in the second game, everything just gets so wide. There's so much space that you'll never really... That sort of claustrophobic feel that some of the best parts in the first game mm. have, that's completely gone now. This, this whole uh, popularizing of the, the, the second game for the first yeah. game kind of sign, sounds like what people are worried about with games like Dead Space and Demon's Souls. Yeah. Demon's Souls 2. Yeah. Uh, specifically Demon's, uh, Dead Space 3 and Demon's Souls 2. Yeah. And historically, that is a valid concern. Yeah. And that was that, I think that was one of the reasons why people were concerned about, about this game. Hmm. When Ninja Theory took over, I think one of the worries was that they'd, they'd do a Devil May Cry 2 again. Possibly as well yeah. with, with, with it's specifically with uh, the sort of Capcom stuff, uh, talking about Resident Evil with mm. 5 and 6 as well. Yeah. The, there was an issue with 5. 5 kind of got away with it because it was actually quite well done, but it was a completely mm. different... It went for this sort of action, uh, third-person action game rather than it being a survival horror game. And then 6 yeah. just, you know... Well, Which that, is why that was I, a whole think, different kind of I think all that stuff was... Those concerns were and are valid. Mm. But again, like, like I've been saying, I think this is a good reboot and I think sets up Devil May Cry as a series to to start going in a, in a new a new direction that I'm quite happy with. Okay, so that's one and two. Yeah. Three was the first game in, yeah. the, in the story. But went three, one, four, two, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. I've done my research. <laughs> <It's you. laughs> Thanks, Wikipedia. Uh, <coughs> so this is most like uh, three, you were saying, I guess, in terms of story arc. Yeah. So what was what was the three's your favorite of the the series? Yeah. Why? Now, three is well. Three is just really fun. Like it's incredibly difficult. Yeah. Like as a response to as to, two, everyone was like, "Oh, it's too simple." So Capcom were like, "Fine, if you want a hard game, you will get one." <laughs> and so they went. Sounds out. Sounds like they were bullying their consumers. Pretty much. Like the first boss in Devil May Cry Three, I found so difficult it took me like a day to beat. And this boss even harder than the scorpion thing in the first. Yeah, <laughs> like and this boss would then become like a regular enemy. Oh right. Like the classic uh, game design like, trick of the first boss in the game is the every boss in the game. It becomes like an enemy halfway through the game yeah. and you're like, "Oh man." And that, Oh, sorry, he actually yeah. just became a standard. Yeah, 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 oh right, yeah. okay. So he'd pop Ouch. up in like every room every now and then. Um, a grim reaper like figure. Oh, was it really? <laughs> it was a, a grim, grim reaper like, like devil. And then the second boss in the game, Cerberus, is really, really difficult. Like, yeah. even now I do it sometimes, and I just find it incredibly difficult. Okay, Cam's so getting SS ranks here. Yeah. That's... that's Cam, are you playing on, on the normal yeah. difficulty? Just are you regular? playing the German yeah. version? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's a bit, it's that's a bit dark. much, isn't it? That's dark. Um, well, what? Yeah, I've lost, you've lost your chain of thought now. You've ruined me. Well, I think you've ruined me life. Forties Europe. Um, <laughs> Devil May Cry 3. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good. Is that it? Uh, and it had lots of... Some of the things that... So it, it brought in more weapons. It brought in, like, fast weapon switching. Mm. So you would have multiple weapons on the go at once. So you could start a combo with Rebellion. Mid-combo, you could switch it to uh, another weapon. Uh, one of my favorites was called Agni and Rudra, which was, like, one... You had two swords. One was, like, wind and one was fire. And, you know, they looked great. There was one weapon... Those are Earth... Uh, no, no, no! It wasn't the Captain Planet weapon set. Almost no. I was going with I was going for Earthman and Fire, yeah. but oh yeah, fair enough. And so one of the weapons in Devil May Cry Three, before I forget, is a guitar that shoots bats. Okay, okay? <laughs> this was the kind of game that Devil May Cry Three is, and it is great. Okay, I played it last year. It is still a great game. It's fast. The combat's good. You know, the weapon selection is great. Mm. There's a lot of combo opportunity. I quite like the style of it. Um, all of that I see in here. As you can see, like Dante can still switch to multiple weapons on the fly. Yeah. And one of the things introduced in three was his brother Virgil, who is sitting to or sitting on the sitting on the bench right now wearing oh, that. Oh, it's his bro. Yeah, wearing oh, that know. lovely, lovely hat. Spoilers. Yeah. Uh, Devil May Cry Four. It's rounded up. You're um, saying it's not the worst of the series. No. But it's close. Yeah, Devil May Cry Four. They 
This is when Capcom started to get super worried about fan response. So this is okay. 2008. Yeah, this Two, is three years after uh, Dove McRae. This 3. is the first one on the Xbox current generation yeah. platforms. I was going to say next gen, but that term feels a bit redundant when applied to the, the Xbox past. 360 yeah. and PlayStation 3 now. But it was the first one of those games, and they introduced a new hero mm. called Nero, who had this a hero called Nero. Hero called Nero. It's going to um, take the evil down to zero. Yep. Yeah. That back was the for, theme back song. To Captain Devil May Cry 4. <laughs> That was it. That played over the start menu. It was brilliant. Um, he had a sort of uh, powerful fist thing that could grab enemies and pull them close to him. Okay. So you can see that in this one as well. That thing has, has been retained. Is that taking a leaf out of God of War? Is that what's happening there? Probably a bit. Crack Probably a stuff. bit. Yeah. I, I could see that there. And But people were like, we don't want this guy. Yeah. We don't want this guy. We where's, want Dante. Solid Snake. That kind <laughs> yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, we want Solid Snake back. And so Capcom had to patch him in. Uh, <laughs> But no, so the first half of the game is with this new guy, mm. and then the second half of the game is with Dante running back through all of the levels in reverse. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like Zelda. It's, you can tell it's like a real afterthought. They're like, oh, God, if they don't get Dante, they're going to be pissed. <laughs> um, so they, they like have him in, and then you just go back through there. It just feels kind of, again, it doesn't really have any sense of adventure anymore. Yeah. Like, and, it's, and it's a bit, uh, it's also super camp. <laughs> Devil May Cry 4. Uh, and it just, I don't know, again, that sort of, the spirit of fun and adventure mm. and that sort of playfulness that I think 1 and 3 had are the things that 2 and 4 loses. Yeah. And to bring it to this, I think this, while being a different game and one that if you really want like a traditional Devil May Cry, you might be a bit upset by it first, mm. but I think it has that feeling of playfulness. I think it has spirit to it. I think it has an energy that the best games in the series have had. Yeah. So while I do think it's a very different game, and while this, while as we've just gone over it, this series has a lot of ups and downs, I do think there is a lot of what has made Devil May Cry good in the past in this game, even though it's a very different game. Cool. All right. Yeah. Well, before we get Mr. Walton in to uh, talk about his review. Yeah. Hi, Mark. Thanks Hello. for joining us. Um, uh, the early games are available on a HD collection. They is are. it one to four? One to three are available as part of the HD collection. Of course, because four is already. 360 and PS3. How do you judge that, um, that as a boxed product? It's it's all right. Hmm. It's all right. It could be a little better. It's not as good as the Metal Gear Solid HD collection, yeah. which is really, really good. Um, but it's it's decent enough. You can pick it up for less than a tenner or your equivalent denomination. <laughs> You can probably pick it up for less than three dollars now. The game actually works these days now, uh, so it's cheap and and the ports are uh, they're okay. They're is okay. it the vanilla ports or is there a special uh, edition? As things part of or? three, you get the special edition, which was released afterwards, that allows you to play as Virgil okay. and makes the game slightly easier. Mm. There is a mode that makes it slightly easier because it was really difficult, like almost too difficult for most people. Yeah. So so as part of that special edition, it's just slightly easier to play. Um, and that's good. Devil May Cry 4 is available. The PC port has been on sale on Steam loads of times and is it's a pretty decent port as long as you've got an Xbox controller. Yeah. It's a straight console port, but I think that's probably one of the better ways to play it now. Was there a price on that? Was there uh, I think I got it for like two quid over Christmas. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. as, as recent as that. So, I mean, these, you know, if you want to dig into the backstory of these games or, or the history of the series, it's not going to set you back a lot of money. Or you can probably buy yeah. it on Xbox Live Games on Demand for fifty nine ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. probably. Yeah. yeah. Probably. No manual. Cutting. <laughs> Cutting satire. <laughs> <laughs>